Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Rochel from Auburn University. And on today's episode, we're going to be continuing a conversation uh, with Emanuele Gomez around uh, her work on uh, necrotic enteritis infection models, in particular molecules uh, that have been uh, uh, studied uh, under these, these models. So, Emanuele, good to see you and uh, excited to, to continue the, the conversation. Uh, a couple of questions. So, you know, you're targeting subclinical necrotic enteritis. What are, in, in this particular model, um, you know, this is anytime we model a, a pathogen or a challenge, it's always the balance of, of having enough uh, to show the statistical differences and the potential improvement, but not going too far so that the bird is you know, uh, damage beyond any nutritional intervention being able to help. I mean, what, what are some of the outcomes that you're seeing with your model um, from lesions or performance? Uh, what yeah. impact does it have on the bird? Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, it's very hard to cause this to be clinical necrotic arthritis because you don't want to see clinical signs. So you want to see on only mild lesions. And, uh, and also, you don't understand 100% the pathogenesis and virulence of the, the strains that cause necrotic enteritis. So it's been very challenging to modify and adapt our challenge model. But uh, some outputs that we are seeing using this challenge model um, were in terms of performance. So the main thing about subclinical necrotic enteritis is to see reductions in performance. So this is something that we are seeing applying our challenge model and is the main output that we were expecting to see. And, uh, and in the dissections, we can see the lesions, mild lesions in the intestine. So we can put, we can give spores for the birds for those lesions. And we are seeing mild lesions. And uh, in terms of micro, uh, microscopic lesions, we are seeing this as well. Uh, so this uh, reduction in villa height, for example, a reduction in, in uh, absorption area in birds uh, that were not supplemented. They were just fed with uh, a commercial type diet without any medication or supplementation. So and also some immune responses. So it's it's been very clear that the, the model is, is functioning. But also we depend, each, each time that we run a trial, we depend on the procedural perfringes that are in the, in the bar environment, right? So if you do a sanitation or this kind of things, we can have a little bit different outputs uh, depending on the, the trial. So yeah, but this was uh, something that we also counting on because we want to see, we want to see what are the effects of the strains uh, locally prevalent, right? So maybe the strains we have here in Canada are a little bit different in US, in Brazil, and we want to see the real effect of that on, on Briar. So. Certainly. The 2023 Arkansas Nutrition Conference Technical Symposium is brought to you by Kerry. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate. Let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates improve nutrient utilization. Gut health technologies differ by type, innovative ways to feed, and a novel technology that will light your performance on fire. See us August 29th in Little Rock. In terms of your performance impacts, are you seeing, uh, say, 5% reduction in body weight gain, 10%? What's kind of the magnitude there? Yeah, the main uh, the main thing that we are seeing is uh, increase in feed intake, so the negative control birds they get sick for a while and then they try to recover eating a lot. So the mo the result that is more clear, they are increasing the feed conversion ratio and feeding peak. Uh, in the end of the trial, they are able to recover. They are able to recover the the body weight, the final body weight. However, the feed, the feed conversion ratio in the total period is uh, higher than the birds uh, supplemented with antibiotic and or with other products that we are testing. Interesting. So the feed, the feed intake response, is that happening immediately or are they having depressed feed intake initially and then increasing? Or uh, Because often when we animals are sick in general, the feed intake goes down. 
Exactly. So right after the application of the challenge model, so the COXI vaccine, we provided then for the birds at 12 days of age. And right after that, and the window from uh, 12 to 18 days or 20 days of age, we see a decrease in feed intake. And after that, in the finisher phase, they, the, the feed intake go, yeah, goes like very high. So they are trying to compensate that. However, the, we can see like a feed conversion ratio increasing as well. So. Very interesting. And so, um, with the, the new, the novel products that you're testing, I mean, are, do you feel like you're getting, um, responses that are, are similar to commercial, commercially available antibiotics? Yeah. So just first, I believe that you'd be hard to find only one product that can replace all the benefits of the antibiotics, but we believe that maybe these products can be part of an alternative to replace antibiotics. So probably the effective solution you be a sum of a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, things, like a lot of factors, not only products but management and a lot of other things. But um, yeah, we are seeing some we are seeing some interesting results. So the chitons and oligosaccharides. Um, they are showing to uh, keep the performance after the challenge compared to non-supplemented uh, non birds or so birds that did not receive any medication in the diet. And they are also able to maintain the, the gut morphology at the same level as a diet with AGPs. And uh, yeah, also the glucosamine-derived caramels, they showed uh, very nice results as well. They do not only... Uh, increase, enhance the intestinal health, but they also prevent the BCO, the the chrononecro the bacterial chrononecrosis with osteomyelitis as well in the femur head. So it, they decrease the lesions in the femur. And uh, for the punicic acid, it's a little bit more challenging because we use the punicic acid in the form of um, pomegranate seed oil. And we saw a decrease in, in the feeding take caused by uh, the oil, I think so. We are not sure if it's related with uh, the palatability or because it's a very high in saturated uh, fatty acid. It's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. It may cause the rancidification of the feed. I don't know exactly. But uh, right now we are testing other sources of punicic acid. We are... Um, developing a uh, baker yeast enrich it with punicic acid and we are planning to change the source of punicic acid and see if they work or not. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. Uh, back, back up to the BCO comment. So in your uh, model, are you seeing increased incidence uh, of BCO with this uh, natural necrotic enteritis model as well? Or was that in a kind of a separate situation or a unique situation? Or is that something that you've seen generally? Yeah, it's a separate situation because with this project in a specific, the glucosamine derived caramels, we were just uh, thinking that since we are using glucosamine, it might be some effects in the bone health as well. And we decided to go ahead and, and try different, uh, some additional analysis. And we have seen that. But uh, it's something that we can keep in mind for future students, for future stu studies, because um, if you have a leak gut, is is it can happen that you can see more BCO in burners because of the leak gut. So, um, yeah, it's something that we can look at in the in the future studies. But this case in the specific was related with uh, this project with glucosamine. Yeah, very good. And so. You've tried these um, three products individually. Have you tried combinations of these particular products yet? Not yet. So we have tested them separately and uh, we still want to understand a little bit better the mechanism of action involved behind each of them before we make a combination or go ahead and, and test them in, in the field situation, for example. We want to make sure we are understanding the thing um, in a good way to then see what will be the next steps. But um, all of those products we developed here at the University of Alberta and uh, in partnership with other labs. 
And uh, yeah, because of that, we, we want to understand first the mechanism of action, the, their effects on brothers, then the mechanism of action evolved, and then we think about the next steps, but probably a combination would be interesting because they have, um, they work in a different way. Some, some of them work better as a immunostimulant, other as a prebiotic, and maybe a combination. Yeah, it'd be interesting to look at it. Yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, the the caramelized glucosamine is there. Does it have a unique uh, sensory characteristics to smell, or uh, do you think that the taste for the birds? Uh, probably the inclusion is very low. Yeah, the inclusion is very very low. I don't know if it will affect the the palatability to affect. I don't think it will. The inclusion is very very low. Um, but, um, yeah, the first time I thought that you'd be like some kind of sweet, but right. it's not, it's like bitter taste. So ah, so. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Now, very interesting. Um, anything else you want to, uh, tell the audience about your, your ongoing uh, project that you're, you're excited about? Yeah, so this uh, this research in general is very nice. So I'm enjoying a lot to work with that because I'm not only uh, testing these products, discovering their mode of action and everything, but I'm also at the, at the same time, I'm developing and refining a challenge model. So working with that is very, uh, is very exciting for me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to continue work with them, to continue um, be working in academia and perhaps explore them a little bit further. Yeah, very good. Well, hey, thank you so much, Emanuele. It's, it's been great to learn uh, about this and I've enjoyed the, the conversation and best of luck in finishing up your program. Thank you so much, Sam. All right, great. Thank you. Hey, everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.